Hi, uh, my name is Ed Lance, Vortex Immersion Media and Chair of SIGGRAPH uh, Los Angeles. I'm here with uh, Ray McIntyre. And uh, Ray, why don't you just tell us a little about um, what you do? Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Ray McIntyre. I'm a uh, visual effects supervisor and visual effects producer. Uh, I usually get hired by studios and companies to uh, do the visual effects for movies like uh, Netflix or uh, Warner Brothers or CBS or ABC or companies like that. I also have my own company called uh, Pixel Magic. I am the president of Pixel Magic and we are a uh, visual effects house, a small visual effects house that's been in business for more than 30 years now. And what I do is um, I create and budget and produce uh, visual effects for features. Generally I'm known for creating photorealistic work. Um, most recently I did uh, the movie uh, Green Book won Academy Award, two Academy Awards for uh, Best Picture and for Best Screenplay, I think. And I did the visual effects for that, and my company did as well. And uh, the visual effects we did on that movie is uh, the actor Mahershal Ali did not play the piano in that movie at all, so he, um, we, he everything he did was a head replacement. So we had a, a piano player play the piano on set, and then move the piano player out once we were happy with the take, move Mahershal Ali in, shot him in the, in the same seat, and then in the computer later on composited his head onto the piano player's body. So that's the kind of work I do is we create uh, basically seamless visual effects that hopefully you watched the movie like Green Book and never saw one of the two or three hundred shots that we did for that movie. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, could you uh, tell us a little about the process on Green Book uh, to replace a head? Was that volumetrically scanned or are you working with 2D plates or? Sure, to, uh, to replace the, the head or do the head replacements on Green Book, we actually did it in a more traditional approach where so we did not create a 3D model of Mahershal Ali or anything like that. We actually shot him on location either at the piano or whatever the shot or scene was and composited by via rotoscope. We did not put up green screens because the green screen changes the light value on the actor pretty substantially and so when you're looking for absolute seamless work um, we decided that the, the green screen changed the light too much to make that work so uh, we shot him or we shot him in the scene with the exact same light that was on the piano player and then tracked and rotoscoped and composited Mahershala's head onto the body of the actor so it was all done with a, a more traditional approach instead of either a 3D approach or a I especially like the shot of the, the White House, uh, that scene, uh, and, and, and uh, you actually shot a, uh, what do you call it, a caravan of cars? Um, yes. And uh, you could see through the windows. How, how, did you, uh, how did you pull that one off? Well, yeah, for this uh, movie called LBJ that was directed by Rob Reiner and it stars uh, Woody Harrelson, um, Rob wanted a shot where the uh, the 1960 presidential motorcade was driving out of the White House down Pennsylvania Avenue to go off in you know whatever their business was for that day and uh, so you don't there isn't um, you cannot get a permit to shoot in front of the White House um, and plus Pennsylvania Avenue is closed to all car traffic except for presidential car traffic so it's not something you can go and do and uh, so in order to create it um, movie was being shot in New Orleans so we shot the motorcade driving on a parking lot in New Orleans and because of the camera move and the, the extreme scale of watching them drive out the front driveway of the of the White House and then panning to follow them as they drove down Pennsylvania Avenue it was a really big camera move so we were unable to put up a green screen for the size and scale that would have been needed for that so the um, approach had to be rotoscope and th that's something we're very familiar with fortunately and uh, so it was really the talent of the artist that put the shot together uh, his name is Pat Trahan he was responsible for all this he uh, his ability to make us believe that as we saw through the window of the motorcade as it was driving in the Louisiana parking lot he had to roto and create transparencies and create glass basically for his own 
you know, the, when, you, when you go around a corner, especially those cars, they had big rounded pieces of glass and they would distort the image. And so he actually created pieces of glass and created his own distortion. So as the car rounded the corner and you're now seeing the White House background through there, that it distorted and created that exactly. It was it work? And then, and then we generated a, a matte painting for the White House based on photography that I did at the White House today um, and then painted out everything that isn't period or doesn't look correct and added in movement for trees and things like that. Very impressive. Um, why don't you tell us a little about what software tools that you use uh, in your work? Uh, we use a lot of software to uh, complete the visual effects work, a lot of different tools. Um, first off, you know, you usually have to match, move, or track your, your scene or your object or whatever it is, which means what that means is you have to, uh, the, if you have a moving camera and a person in the shot that's moving and you want to add something to the person, you need to know what that movement of that person, let's say we want to change my badge to something else and I'm walking and the camera's moving. So you need to know what the movement of that is in the computer, so we call it a match move, which means we're going to match the motion of what the physical object in the real world does in the computer, so that we then the computer recreate its motion exactly with a in pixels and in dimensions in the computer and then we can replace the object change the object do whatever it is so we we use tools to do that which is called match move um, we use uh, synth eyes and tools like that as our pri primary match mover and then you generally everything whether you create something in 3d to change the object or not you have to composite it and um, we use different compositing tools, but primarily we use uh, Adobe After Effects and Nuke um, for our two primary compositing tools. And they both have you know, features and feature sets that are unique and different than the other, and both have um, uh, pros and cons that the other one does or doesn't have. So we use those two. There are others that are very similar, um, but those are our two main tools. And then for creating you know, 3D objects like the, the cars in uh, Green Book or the creature in Rim of the World or the snowfall in Green Book, to create those kinds of things that have to be generated in a computer, they are solely made in the computer. We use several different tools. Uh, we use uh, Lightwave 3D, we use Maya, we use, uh, some of our people use Houdini for certain things. Again, the tool that you choose should be based on what its strength and or weakness isn't that you don't want. So if something is really good at doing water, for example, you know, CG Ocean, CG Water, then you use that tool. Not all 3D software tools, sets, create water equally as good as the next. So you choose a tool that's best for the project. And um, why don't you tell us uh, maybe one of your most challenging projects that you're most proud of? Uh... Well, I think the, the project I'm most proud of right now is Green Book because it's it's a recent project. It won two Academy Awards. Um, one, uh, the, the movie itself did. The the actor won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. And uh, you know, a, a lot of people would probably say that they thought he was playing the piano, even though he did not. So that's something that you know we are very proud of, and I'm proud of, that in the sense that we made something that no one had any. Hopefully, no one had any idea that we actually modified or changed. Certainly, I did. Yeah, um, that was very and then uh, you know I, I, you know I, I say I learned something I've been doing this this I've been in this business for quite a while and I've been doing this for a very long time but I learned something basically on every show I learned either how to improve or what I should have done better or what I can do on the next one and uh, so there's many shows like that so you know uh, recent ones come to mind for me uh, rim of the world we you know we had to uh, def design and create uh, two different creatures three or four different aliens vessels and ships and things like that and that's always fun for a different reason because you're when you're designing and creating something you're trying to make something that hasn't been seen or hasn't been done before which is difficult in today's world especially when it comes to aliens and spaceships and things like that and uh, and then implement them in a way that they look like they're real in the shot they're realistic and photorealistic in the shot and so that's always fun unique challenges um, but always fun My work involves uh, projecting on large uh, domes, and uh, we're creating shows uh, with A-list talent. Uh, we did uh, a show with uh, Childish Gambino, otherwise known as Donald Glover, in a 160-foot dome 
out in uh, the Joshua Tree Desert. And uh, we had uh, uh, 12 uh, video projectors covering the dome blended together and uh, produced the whole concert. Uh, five shows over three days, 2,500 people per show inside the dome. Uh, and uh, we also did an event at the Coliseum here uh, for the founder of Minecraft. Uh, he invited 3,000 of his uh, closest friends uh, to come to a party and uh, with Skrillex and Diplo and some big DJs. And uh, that was 24 video projectors uh, blended together uh, to create one big image. So now there's a project in Vegas, uh, Madison Square Gardens Entertainment makes LED Dome that will hold 20,000 people. So now we will have an arena uh, that our artists can graduate to. And uh, yeah, and then my company is uh, building um, 500 to 2,500 seat venues. So we hope uh, CG artists uh, get into the format, create spherical, not just for VR, but also for Dome. You know, and, and what I do as a visual effects supervisor and producer and as a company owner, I've been doing this for a long time and my most of my, that's not a good way to say it, I was going to say most of my exposure is, is U.S. based, but I travel all over the world for shooting and for production and things like that. The post-production end of things is in the last 10 or 15 years really started to become worldwide, but um, I would say now that's really expanding even more so with, you know, China and India and Australia and so it's um, I for one I'm all for the worldwide visual effects input because uh, there's lots of reasons for that number one um, the more brains you have figuring something out the better it's likely to get and the result will be and so um, it's, it's always nice to involve people who either look at something a little bit differently with a fresh perspective as opposed to a perspective that I may have or colleagues may have looked at for a long period of time and we go down one path when there is really another path that might get something done. So I actually enjoy, uh, I enjoy traveling for production and I enjoy um, being on shows now where you know you have five, six, seven hundred, even more of those movies that have two and three thousand shots. You have to involve companies all over the world in order to get them done and, and that's it's a challenge but it's a, it's a good one. For sure.